Hi there, it's Matt Allington here. Today I'm going to show you how to build this slicer. And what I really like about this slicer is down the bottom here you'll notice a histogram indicating how many products are at each of the various price points. Here I have a table down the bottom showing me all of the products. And I can come here and move the slicer. Say I only want to see products above this price here. And you'll see that this table down the bottom here adjusts to show me just those products. If I sort biggest to smallest I can do the same from this end and as a result I can see the products going up to this price here. So I'm going to show you how to build this uh, little slicer tool today. So first of all let's take a look at the data model. So this is the AdventureWorks database and I have a sales table here and the sales table is connected through to the products table and the list price is available here in the products table. So this is the table that I'm going to be filtering inside my slicer. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'll put a table onto my canvas here and I'll bring in the product list price. I'll bring in the product key, the product name, and also the product category. So I just have a list here. This is actually a bug, this counter product key. I just come in here and change it to don't summarize. And so now I've got a table showing me the list of all the products. In fact, what I could do um, is I could put a card here and in the card I will bring the product key, which is unique and automatically that counts the product key. So I know how many products are currently filtered. Okay, so the next thing I need is a slicer. And so I'm going to add a slicer and I'm going to bring the list price into the slicer. And here we have the price range. And when I move these slices, you can see that the table and also the count of products updates to make sure that it's correctly reflecting the settings that I have in the slicer. Okay, so the next thing is I need a histogram. I'm going to use a regular column chart and I'll bring the list price as the axis and once again I'll bring the product key in as the value and by default that will count the individual product keys. Now there's a few configuration changes I need to make here. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off the header so that is the title. I'll also turn off the x-axis. I'll turn off the y-axis. And the other thing I'll do, I'll just come here and remove this filter because what I'd like to do is I'd like to set the min and max and also the maximum counts to be uh, fixed. So the maximum number of products is 12. So what I'm going to do under the y-axis, I'm going to set this to go between 0 and 12 and under the x-axis I'm going to go from 0 to 3600. Now at the moment it's not possible to dynamically set these but I'm pretty sure in a future release the expression-based formatting will allow you to set these dynamically but for now I'm setting them to the min and max values. Okay so now I have my chart here and I'll just sort of make it smaller. What I will do is I'll just come and turn on the border so that I can see the edge of this. And this will just help me do the alignment with the slicer. And then once I've done that alignment, I'll come back here and I'll turn that border off again. All right, so now when I change this, because I've changed the axis so that it doesn't auto reset, um, it means that when I change this it shows me the values that are currently selected. Um, but one more thing would be pretty cool is that if I could still see the items that were not selected. And I looked at a few different ways of doing this but I came up with ultimately what's just a simple solution. I'm going to select this item and then Control c Control v so I duplicate it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically drag the top one on top of the bottom one so that they're completely aligned with each other. I'll come here and I'll change the data colors to be just a nice gray like that. And you can, in fact, I might just nudge a little bit just to make sure that they're aligned. You can see that they're just not quite aligned. I really want these 100% on top of each other. 
a little bit of color bleed there. Okay, so that's pretty good like that. And now with this top one, the gray one, I don't want this to interact with the slicer. So I need to come up here and change edit interactions so that this one does not filter. And then as a result of that, the gray one stays the same. And then I can turn off interactions. And now I need to put this gray one at the back. And so to do that, I'm coming up to view selection pane. And now I can change the order of these things. So I want the slicer at the top. And it's a bit hard to see which one of these is the shadow. So th this one here, double click, I'll call this selected. And I'll call this one all price range. Okay, and I want the selected to go on the top. And so now when I move this like this, you'll see that I get this little shadow showing me the ones that are not selected and I can clear the slicer like this. And that's pretty much it. Of course, now you can spend a bit of time improving the look and feel of the histogram slicer. I have the one that I prepared earlier here. Um, I've published it up into powerbi.com and therefore you don't get all the interaction with the items overlapping each other. I can come here and I can select my items and my table down the bottom updates and I can see the price range here.